Hi, and welcome to Module 3. Now, um, what we're going to be doing in this module is looking in a lot more detail at how I've programmed the glitch percussion and the vocal hits group, okay? So, all of those really sort of intricate, complex, glitchy percussion sounds and those tight little vocal stabs that you can hear in the track. Okay, so, so this sort of stuff really... Um Okay, so then after that, what we'll do is we'll we'll start programming a couple of new patterns using those kind of techniques where we're, we're programming really tight intricate percussion like that, and dropping in some of those vocal hits as well. Something to accompany the new beats that we wrote in the last module. Okay, so going back to the project, what we're focusing on this module is Group B, which is glitch percussion, and Group E, which is the atmospheric and vocal effects. Now I went through those briefly in the introduction, but I'll just quickly play you those sounds again, okay? So we've got in the um, glitch percussion section, and then in the atmospheric and hits group, we've got the big impact, taller sound, riser, and then there's just a couple of vocal. vocal effects snippets there okay now to hear those in the context of the track I'll just play this loop here which I've, I've labeled chill or loop should I say scene that I've labeled chill because it, it's where the track kind of mellows out of it after after a heavier section okay so I'll just play this section and if you can listen out for that glitchy percussion I just played you and those vocal bits okay <laughs> Just to make them slightly clearer, I will mute the basses and the main drums and the um, melodic group. Okay. <laughs> Okay, then the um, glitch percussion on its own. Now the glitch percussion, like I played you, it's it's just just lots of really short percussive and drum samples. A lot of them are pitched up by up to maybe an octave. There's one there which is pitched up three octaves. And with most of them, as you can see, I've, I've set the envelopes really short, like the, taking the decay all the way down using, using the AHD envelope. You know, really short hold. You know, it's only 84 milliseconds on that one, which is really, really short. Short release on all of them pretty much. Okay, so just lots of lots of tweaks really. Okay, so then on the atmospheric and vox hits, uh, this one here, the raw sample was. If I remove some of these effects, okay, so that's that's the original sample. Pretty much stripped back to how it was when I loaded it in. Okay, so the first thing I did was went into the sample editor, switched loop on, went into edit mode, and I it took me a while, but I eventually found a nice sounding loop. There's lots of cool glitchy stuff you can do with that. One thing that's missing from Machina at, at the moment is the ability to automate this loop length. So you can make some really, really cool effects with that, but unfortunately that's not available at the moment. And I'm guessing that's something they might implement in a future version. 
Okay, so that was the loop I got. It's a nice glitchy kind of effect. And then I should mention I also added the bandpass filter. And that was really just to focus in on the vocal section of the frequency spectrum, okay? Just to bring out the just to bring out the kind of crispy, almost telephone band of the vocal. Also added a tiny bit of compression, a bit of drive, a bit of sample rate reduction. Not too much. Just enough to make it sound a bit more glitchy. All things which could potentially be automated as well. Okay then, the LFO I signed to the pan. That's making it kind of slowly move around from left to right. I also applied the chorus. And that kind of makes it a lot wider again. And also it adds this kind of sparkly, shimmery kind of sound to it, which I really like. Okay, then we had the plate reverb. Not a huge amount of mix, it's only 17%, but it's enough to just help fill out the track slightly, fill out the atmosphere. Finally, we've got a high pass filter. The LFO is sweeping it down by about 54% on LFO shape, 50%, which is actually a ramp down. Like a sawtooth wave. Okay, so that's it for that sound. The other sound that I used was this blam sound, okay? And that was just from the Machina Factory Library. And all I did with that was just shorten the envelope. Yeah, just to make it really short and glitchy. Okay, and what I'll do now is just focus in a bit more detail in these really complicated fills here. Okay, so I'm just going to mute the atmospheric and vox channel on E1 and just play group B on its own. And I'll just play one bar just so I can really focus in on these sounds, okay? So we've got this really quick run here on this sound. It's a really short sound anyway, so it lends itself well to those sort of 64th notes. Now you can't really see too clearly on the 16th note grid, but if I switch to the 128th note grid, you can see how tight these notes are and how they're hitting on those on those 128th notes. And an easy an easy way to program those in is to select 128th notes, then choose the paint tool and just do something like that. And you can do that obviously on many of the sounds. Yeah, you can really go to town with this glitchy stuff if you want. And then it's nice to um, sort of draw in some automation curves as well on the volume. On the... Uh, velocities just to make them a bit less harsh in fact I really like the sound of that I think I'm gonna keep that now I'm just gonna double check if those changes do work so I'm just gonna and solo.
Okay, I really like the way that sounds, so what I'll do is just make four bars worth of that. Okay, so you've got to remember there's a gap at the end. We need that for the fill. So what I'll do is clear all of those and then take this marker back. So we've only got a one bar loop and then double the pattern twice, giving us four bars again and delete everything at the end and then make sure that sounds okay. Extend the play range. 